This is Taking Addressable TV to the Next Level. Um, this is our panel discussion. Uh, please give a very warm welcome to Dan, Jayesh, Paul and Annie. What do we do? I think, I think we're waiting for um, Annie because we're a bit early on the panel, so I don't know if anybody knows her personally to maybe drop her a quick WhatsApp or if she's outside. But if not, we'll just crack on. She, she, is, she is here, one of the guys. Oh, oh, perfect, thank you. She didn't get the memo. <laughs> I didn't get the memo. <laughs> Right, should we, should we maybe give her a minute? I think so. Yeah. Quick show of hands, just sorry, so we've got a good <laughs> understanding of, it's not a poll, don't worry, who's in the audience? Um, who, who's from the buy side, I advertiser or agency? Okay, cool, some of you. Uh, what about streaming service, so broadcaster, Avod or fast app? Nice, and what about ad tech, buy side or sell side? Cool, okay, nice healthy mix. Um, and do you want to maybe kick off and just quickly... Another quick poll. Who follows Paul Gubbins on, on, uh, on, on LinkedIn? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry Who's about that. Who's participated in one of his polls? <laughs> you, you, <laughs> there are ad blockers. <laughs> um, this won't be the last poll in 40 minutes. <laughs> Gents, should we quickly maybe introduce ourselves yeah. just so we can kick things yeah. off? Shall I go first? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. <Sorry. laughs> So I'm Jay, uh, my team um, run Advanced Advertising ITV, so looking at all aspects of our addressable product set, uh, what we have in the market right now, uh, what works, what needs to be better, and all aspects of addressable advertising innovation. Um, I came into ITV three years ago to drive the rollout Planet B, which is our self-service buying platform. Um, and since then, um, we've now got 2,000 users of Planet B, um, and it's been a resounding driver of our, of our, of our addressable revenue growth. You'll have all seen um, our numbers last week. Yep. Um, um, addressable advertising for us is up 19%, up to close to 500 million. Wow, that's in, amazing. In the UK, and I think a large part of that we, we see is down to the accessibility that Planet B is driven yeah. and our program of innovation. Nice. and. Yeah, so I'm Dan. Um, I look after product and innovation at Sky Media. Been doing that for three or four years. Been planning for twenty odd years before that. Um, and I've kind of I'm not really a product guy. I just kind of fell into it because I like making stuff that makes things better. Um, but ultimately, I um, look after all of our addressable products and and the growth that we try and drive through them. Plus, have the fun of trying to come up with new ones um, and new by just listening to listening to the market, understanding what's out there. Um, both from a tech, tech point of view and uh, obviously customer and client point of view as well. So that's me. Perfect. Thanks, Dan. And Annie, just in time. Hi. Hi, everyone. We're Sorry. just doing intros. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to maybe just briefly introduce yourself and yeah, where you work? Yeah, of course. Um, so I'm Annie. I work at EMX. I'm the head of video planning across the agency. And yeah, I've recently moved into this role. I think it was November. I came back from Matt Leaf. So it's a really exciting new role for us to kind of help shape our video product across the agency. Perfect, thank you. Okay, so first question, uh, ITV, Sky, two of the biggest broadcasters uh, in the UK. What types of data um, do, do terrestrial broadcasters really have now to enable their inventory to become more addressable for those on the buy side? Are, is there unique first party data that enables you to, to attract those advertisers that maybe want to buy in a programmatic way? Should I start on that one? I'll go, go first. I'll go first. Um, so, um, yes. But obviously, data is becoming kind of more generic at the same time. Obviously, we've been building addressable products for, well, I mean, we launched Ad Smart over 10 years ago now, right? Which is kind of the first major at scale addressable linear piece. Um, and, and I'd say kind of we've got two, um, you know, hard sets of, of first party data that we are able to, to monetize ultimately, yeah. right? One is our viewing panel. Um, you know, Barb's, what, 5,000 homes, Sky's a proportion of that. Um, when I first joined Sky 15 years ago, we had our own panel of about 20,000, and last year we rolled out a panel of 4 million. So in terms of understanding what people are doing and what people are watching, we've got kind of 
uh, an unbelievable amount of insight that we can put out. There was a session before on, on context, and yeah. I was kind of going, yeah, we can do that bit, that bit, and if you add that, and you can do all this kind of stuff, and just enables um, uh, really good and, and, and you know, more effective targeting, right? So that's one really important um, kind of data set. The other one, which I think will become more and more important in the future, is that we know who our customers are. Yeah. Um, it's, not, um, it's not an email address, it's not an IP address. Um, people have to pay us every month and therefore we have their, <laughs> their bank details, which means ultimately we have their postcode and their name. Um, and when you've really got that kind of hard, unique ID for our customer base, you can then start to really take advantage of the third party data sets that are in the market. And you know, starting with ex things like Experian or mm -hmm. stuff like that, but you know, um, shopping data has been one that's kind of had a lot of noise in the last 12 months. We've, we've been doing shopping data for 10 years, yeah. right? Because we've been able to match it to that first party data. And we've got something like a thousand different attributes which we now enable and it's all hardcore linked back to that unique ID. Yeah. So you really know you're reaching the right okay. people. So, so a lot of first party data your side that increasingly <coughs> you're trying to surface back out to the yeah. buy side to target in a privacy compliant and controlled way. Clearly privacy yes, compliant. And we, and we wouldn't ever get to a point where we sell first party, <coughs> yeah. sorry. We're not in a situation where we sell that first party data, but we're able to leverage that with the third party data, but that data matching is at another level because we yeah. know who people are. No, that makes sense. And Jay, from your side, you touched upon Planet V in your intro. Yeah. My understanding yeah. is that that makes it much easier for a whole host of different advertisers to yeah. get their ads onto the biggest screen in the household for the first time. Yeah. So c can you maybe give us several examples of what types of data and what types yeah. of advertisers are now leaning into ITV because you're making it easier for them to transact on TV? Yeah, so much like Dan, much like Sky, um, our first party data sits at the, at the absolute heart of um, our offering to advertisers. Very different, yep. um, because fundamentally we're delivering addressability to ITVX. Yep. And where, wherever ITVX sits, uh, we have that logged in data. So yep. we have 40 million records now um, across the UK, between 15 and 25 million active in any one month. Wow, and that, that's so the that, VOD service, right? The broadcast that, of video on demand. Yes, yes, let, let, let's, call, let's call it a streaming service okay. because a growing portion of our audience are streaming an array an array of different content, yeah, okay. not, not just catch up. Yeah. Um, but but, but, but our, 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 our un, what we know and, and the layers of information that we capture on a registered audience, our email, yeah. our, we know where they are, we know where they live, um, we, know their, we know their rudimentary demographics. Um, and, what, what we're, and what we're seeing is that data still being used by the vast majority of, uh, sort of legacy TV advertisers. Yeah to augment linear reach okay. um, um, across streaming. You know, more and more of our audiences are watching um, on demand, watching both a mix of live shows in the streaming environment, live shows catch up, um, but also much more, because we've got a lot more content on ITVX now, they're, they're coming, they're discovering other stuff yeah. that they can watch, other box sets they can yeah. watch, fast channels, um, other, other dedicated channels to movies or comedy. Um, so, so, so there's a lot more scale there. Yeah. Um, so alongside our first party data, what we, are, what we all have also been building furiously, both my team in conjunction with a number of teams that are, across ITV, um, are our data sets to, to try and become more digital, yeah. more full funnel. Okay. So yes, we have an experience in match <coughs> yep. at, a, at a user level. Um, we, we work really closely with MasterCard to bring shopping data. We have also been working really closely with retailers. We launched with Boots and Tesco um, a year ago yep. to bring full funnel intent audiences to what is effectively a quarter of the market. Quarter of the market is still FMCG. Yeah. Really, really important advertiser base. Um, and we've seen phenomenal traction and growth mm. there. Um, and full funnel audience data sets are a real focus for yep. my team. Okay, yep. and I think that, that's a really interesting area of CTV as well, right? With yep. the recent um, Vizio Walmart transaction, I think there's yep. going to be more interest from those on the buy side to couple retail data with their, their TV buyers. Um, Annie, from your side, yes. how, are, how are advertisers um, you know, thinking about CTV? Are they, are they looking for television data or is it digital data? Or do they approach it as a, as a new environment that's the best of both worlds? What, what does it look like from your side of the fence? I think it's the best of both worlds in a way. So it's more about the data that we've got access to. So first party data, clients are really interested in using that where possible. But again, yep. it comes down to making sure that we're using it in the right environment. 
uh, third party data. Clients have got a huge interest when it comes to using all the retailer data. Yeah. Um, you know, there's various outlets that we can use it in at the moment. So all of the Tesco, Nectar, Boots data, MasterCard, anything like that, that's really, really kind of valuable to clients at the moment. And we see that um, these days we're kind of moving away from looking at a siloed approach when you, we've got our you know, linear TV and digital side of things and we're looking as an agency <coughs> to see how we can really bring this together. So at Essence Mediacom we've got a um, kind of new planning approach which we've formed which really looks at holistic video planning to bring all of those kind of parts together across video to make sure that we're not really, I would say that we're not necessarily looking at, um, you know, as much what our audiences are watching, but it's more about where they're watching these days just to reach the right audience in the right place. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Okay, thanks for the context there. And um, when it comes to traditional broadcasters or terrestrial um, services, how do, they, how do they build out their advertising businesses to compete with the growing number of um, big global streaming services that now get in so much more traction from European TV audiences? Um, can, you, can you give any, any recommendations or any additional insights around how those business models are, are changing to maybe remain relevant and compete for, for ad dollars? So from my perspective, I think the main points are scale. Yep. We need to make sure that where we're kind of investing, there's scale so we're not just repeating the frequency when we're purchasing yeah. activity. Secondly, it's about being transparent. So being kind of upfront with the, the data that you've got and ensuring that you're sharing that with agencies and clients. And then thirdly, I would say measurement as well. So as much as possible working with third party providers, measurement companies to make sure that we're kind of able to tap in and view all of the activity that's going on across client sets together. And then finally, I guess it comes down to, I mean, I feel like I'm probably going to use this word quite a bit today, but I think the final one is probably collaboration. So yeah. what we love to see from the broadcast space is collaboration, yeah. then working together, um, you know, from an agency perspective, in an amazing world, we would kind of have access, one point of access to all of the um, broadcast kind of addressable TV inventory, but I think that's probably further down the road. But I think, yeah, m the main ones are probably transparency and the measurement kind of piece for now. Yeah, fair enough. And I know this is slightly off script, but I need to, need to ask a question just out of interest. How are, how are advertisers thinking about measurement, audience measurement? Are they, are they looking to measure CTV like traditional television because it's, you know, it should be measured with panels or are they looking to measure it like digital because it's increasingly being delivered via the household IP? And this, this could be to anyone on the panel. I mean, it's kind of a question that we're working through at the moment. So the measurement piece, I mean, we've been working quite a bit with audience projects. Yep. So I think we need to be careful when we are looking at measurement that we're not just taking, you know, a total reach figure because the world of video, as we call it, is so vast and so different when you're looking at where you're kind of pulling those video views from. So if you've got it on a big screen, if you've got it on a small screen, they do have an impact. So if you're running a 30 second versus a 15 second, so all of that, we need to make sure that when we're running, you know, when we're looking at measurement, we're also measuring the effectiveness of that video as well. So we're not just taking video, you know, one impression doesn't equal one impression. It's about how the video is kind of um, portrayed by the viewer, yep. depending on what the quality is. I think yeah. that's complete, yeah. I think that's key, is, yep. that, is, is that an impression is not equal. Yeah. Um, it's very, very easy to say it is, mm. because it's very easy to measure things in impressions exactly. across all the different platforms, mm -hmm. right? And that's fine. And you can measure linear impressions if you really want to as well, yeah. so you can do it. Mm. But one impression is not equal. And, you know, uh, scrolling through something on your phone is very different to an immersive experience on yeah, the big screen. Um, so I think that measurement is going to be super, super key going mm -hmm. back, I would say that, right, because of where I work. But um, it, is, it is going to be really important, but it's not just going to be about reach either, it's going to be about outcomes. Yeah. Exactly. And it's going to be about um, all the different things that you want to do, and that could lead us to new trading models in the future yeah, as course. well. So there's lots and lots of interesting area in there, and I think, going back to what you were saying, scale, literally the three things you said, right, scale transparency and, and, and collaboration was exactly what I was going to say. And, and you know, you might have a, a panel of, or a customer base with some of the new OTT platforms of millions and millions and millions, but if only 5% of the people are actually consuming anything on a monthly basis, then it doesn't matter if you've got, you know, 15, 20 million yeah. customers, right? Because it's about the scale of active users. Yeah. Um, and that's super important. Um, and ultimately, the way that we're gonna need to battle that is by continuing to perform yeah. in those spaces, being really transparent. We, we have 
uh, and we have done for, for years, all of our kind of measurement data is independently audited. Mm -hmm. We don't mark our own homework in any way at all because we want to, put, we want to give people that transparency. Yeah. And I think everyone needs to kind of jump on that bandwagon as well. And I think you will start to see bits and pieces of more collaboration as well. Obviously, yeah. um, C-Flight launching last year was a really big piece, obviously focused on reach. And actually, I think it was yesterday yeah. um, that demos were rolled out as well. So it was about 14 audiences or something, because it was and all ads just before that. Um, that's a big step yeah. forward, but and it's hard work. Yeah. And, and for maybe the people in the audience aren't aware, correct me if I'm wrong, but C-Flight enables those on the buy side to get holistic measurement across um, streaming services that support Barb, so for the first time, maybe an agency or brand can understand uh, holistic reach and frequency across all their different streaming TV. I think so it's just broadcast yeah. TV. Just, okay, so yeah. just, just broadcast imagery yes. at the moment. Yes. And then in That's theory, right. if an Avon or Fast Service wanted to participate yeah. in that initiative, they could do if they were, if they were Barb members, I think. I, I think it's. I think that's kind of open to. Okay, that, to that's, that's, that's our hope that that yeah. will happen. Okay, cool. To be yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that'd be great, right? I mean, exactly. I, ideally, the utopia is that if you're in an agency or a brand, you want to understand mm. all of your TV buyers, not just b bot in isolation. Yeah. Because as we know, more and more UK and European TV audiences are now leaning into Avon and Fast. So the entirety of UK television is, is much more than maybe what it once was, right? Yeah, and I think it's interesting because we now have access to Netflix, Disney, yeah. and um, Amazon Prime data on Barb as well. But at the moment, there's the difficulties because we don't have just the ad-funded side of things. So yeah. we can t see the total video market when it comes to looking at broadcast and you know the big CTV players that have just come on board. But we don't have the splits in terms of what is actually ad funded so yeah. that's a difficulty where we would again love to see some more collaboration yep. and the um you know ctv players come on board and actually show us um their you know their audience yeah. figures that makes sense okay cool and um you, you touched upon outcomes briefly um there what what role and i have to ask this question what what role do we think programmatic um and the last panel as well uh, was referencing the uh i guess the introduction of programmatic into tv advertising but from, from your own perspectives, what role is programmatic maybe playing for ITV at the moment, Joe? Programmatic? Programmatic technology for, for, for those on the buy side. Well, 100% of um, all of our um, inventory sold through Planet Viz yep. is, is, served, is decisioned and served programmatically. Yep. That's amazing. Um, and almost all of it is self-service. Yep. Um, so, so that's incredibly important. Yeah. Um, and... Um, the, the, the accuracy that we're, we're able to deliver at yep. scale and independently verified accuracy can only come from the technology that, 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 that we have built out from the digital ecosystem. Yeah, so that in theory right, enables you to capture ad budgets from a whole host of different um, types of advertiser. It could be a traditional linear yeah. TV advertiser, it could be a digital advertiser that wanted to come in via Planet V. Yeah, so that, that journey is, is relatively new for us. But over the last three years, um, we've seen phenomenal growth from yeah. digital advertisers. Yeah. Digital advertisers, so we've got a whole raft, um, and I'm sure you have as well, of new to TV, digital first advertisers yeah. um, coming to ITVX for the first time, aided by the accessibility of Planet V. Yeah, that's great. Um, but with, with the accuracy that we're able to provide down to a postcode, yeah. uh, we can build really accurate postcode, geo, 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 geo footprints, or really accurate audiences yeah. of known boot shoppers. Um, we're seeing dozens every month yeah. of, of new advertisers that have never invested with ITV before. So that's digital budgets on one side. We've got some really interesting examples of where, where CPG advertisers have saturated social video mm -hmm. and are now looking for a better quality experience with the accuracy of the signals, yep. but also the measurement yeah. that, that we're able to provide. So you get the sight, sound, and motion yep. of traditional Absolutely. TV with a precision of... Oh, you OK? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> My chair has disappeared. Oh, right, buddy. Down the trap door. <laughs> what did I say, Rob? <laughs> That's what happens when you say programmatic at a TV <laughs> conference. <laughs> <laughs> I meant addressable. <laughs> Bang! You're right. Uh, where were we? He's talking about. I think uh, the, other, yeah. the, other, the other side of digital budgets. Um, really, we, we, we're talking about the bigger advertisers now. Yeah. Um, more and more of them. So, so I get wheeled out to talk about what we're doing in addressable a lot, um, and more and more bigger advertisers 
and, and let's let's call them the the more the more extended funnel categories like finance, like travel, like autos, are building out entire global teams, global areas of excellence around understanding the mid funnel better. Mm -hmm. um, Google have made a huge, huge play for the mid funnel. Yep. They call it the messy middle. Mm -hmm. And I think the, wor the, the world has sort of orientated around that. Yeah. Um, and more and more of those, those people, those teams are now starting to wake up to the opportunity um, that um, streaming services yeah. can provide in that space as well. Of course. With the accuracy of the signals, the accuracy, the opportunity to bring your own data. Yep. Um, if you're a big, big advertiser in one of those categories, yeah. you've got lots and lots of your own data. Um, and there is no smarter signal yeah. or intent signal um, than your own data. Yeah, no, I completely agree. That, that's yeah. great to hear. So in theory, yeah. it's bringing net new ad budgets into television. Yeah. Um, the, the, it's not necessarily about transitioning traditional linear ad budgets into addressable. It's about how do we collectively grow the overall market of television by the implementation of data and programmatic technology to make it much easier for all types of advertisers to get their ads on the biggest screen. Yeah. So, um, Dan, again, sorry, we we're, were talking about outcomes earlier, and Jay, you've just mentioned signals, and maybe for yourself as well, Anna. What, what, what type of um, interest is there from advertisers when it comes to context? Because, uh, to Jay's point, you can do a lot of targeting now in, in CTV and streaming environments. Is context a signal that's exciting those on the buy side when it comes to looking at frame by frame and how they can unlock new inventory sources? Do you want to take I, I'm first, happy or? to, yeah. yeah. Um, um, I, I, we've got a lot of interest, right? Yeah. It, it's, it's something that comes up a lot. We've got, um, we've got a, 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 an actual first POC live, actually, at the moment of, you know, someone said this earlier, context has been around for years, yeah. right? I mean, people are buying by context linear that just for, you know, for decades, right? Mm -hmm. That's not new. What the technology has given you is the ability to do, to do much more granular um, targeting from a context point of view and at scale because you're not having to manually choose where, where to go. So we've got POC Live at the moment where we have uh, scanned, I think, something like 5,000 um, hours of content or whatever it might be. And from that, we, we're, we're pulling out synopsis, we're pulling out uh, genre, we're pulling out speech, we're pulling out frame by frame yeah. movement. So you're pulling out um, action as, as well as uh, brands and you can pick out moments and that kind of stuff. Importantly, we're also taking sentiment as well um, because you, brands have very rarely want to be associated with, with you know, uh, uh, a darker moments in the TV program, let's say. Um, so we were able to pull something like, I'm trying to remember what the number is, something like 490,000 ad words wow. out of those 5,000 bits of content, right? So context you can do at yeah. such a grand level. Now clearly what you also need to be able to do is deliver at scale. Yeah. So no one's gonna come along and buy one of those things that can only go out three times. Mm -hmm. So we've then taken that, moved it up into kind of IAB taxonomies yeah. to create some larger um, scale there. And the interest is, it, it, it's, it's good, right? People yeah. are, are, are actively contacting us asking about this as opposed to us going out. Um, so I think it, it's, got a, it's got an interesting future. And I think as, as GDP, GDPR comes tighter, yeah. um, uh, as we enter kind of the cookie-less world over yeah. the next however long, um, we're going to need to find new ways to do targeting and context could be one yeah. of them. I think that, you know, it's, it's certainly interesting, but the jury's yeah. out. It's still very early at that granular level, but it's the interest early on has been, been pretty good. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And, um, sorry, go on, Jay. So we launched um, um, a scrappy pilot in ACT, <laughs> let's call it ACT. Uh, I lose track now of the time. About a year and a bit ago, um, we launched it using a patchwork of our own sort of scanning technologies that, 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 that we procured and, and were demoing internally, mainly around video, video scanning, yep. video and image scanning, bring those together. Um, and our data science team are brilliant yeah. at, at making sense of that. Um, the, the, the challenge was scaling it. Mm -hmm. um, and what we realized, that's it. so this, the scanning of video requires an incredible amount of compute, particularly when you have at any one time between 20 and 25,000 hours of content on ITVX. Yeah. Um, so about a year ago, about, about just over a year ago, we started a journey to explore other partners in the, in the addressable space, because obviously yeah. um, automated dynamic context is, is a big deal in, 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 the, in, in the pure play digital space. 
um, which is where we arrived at our partnership with Captify, yeah. um, which we publicised really widely in November. We launched with, with, with a government campaign um, for mental health. Um, but the journey with Captify actually started about this time last year. Okay. Um, and and the, 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 tech, the tech model really is around this. The, the, what we found is what's being said on screen is a much better predicator yeah. for true context yeah. than what you see. <clears throat> yeah. And of course, what's being said, you miss, you miss occasionally what's, what, what, what you see. Yeah. Um, so... Um, but, but what's being said on screen is, is a much better yeah. okay. indicator, which is why we've got to um, a subtitle solution with, with Captify. Yep. Um, we, we have built a model, a constantly iterating machine, learn, machine, machine learning model. Um, it started with every episode on ITVX since its launch last December. Yep. So it's scanned 100,000 episodes um, in five minute intervals. Um, and it is scanning in pretty much in near real time 120 new hours of content wow, going onto okay. the platform. Um, in accordance with their taxonomy, so not the IAB's taxonomy. Um, but, but, but as Dan said, the, 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 the traction for the solution has been incredible. Yeah. Um, we're up to 40 odd campaigns in three months mm, since okay. we launched it. Um, the taxonomy is available in Planet B, which yep. makes it really easy. Yep. Um, we've priced it keenly. Um, and we, 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 we've, we've launched with 12 segments, but we're about to launch another six. Yeah. Okay. Um, but, I, I, there's, there's, there's a real appetite amongst the buy yeah. side. And Annie, obviously you deal with lots of some of the biggest advertisers in the world. When it comes to context in video and things, why are they getting so excited by it at the moment? Um, I think it's just the nature of the way that the industry is moving. You know, it's getting harder and harder to reach audiences. And yep. so the way that we're doing it, we have to be smarter about. So it's, you know, clients are wanting to make sure that they're spending their money in the right places and that they're doing it in the right way. So I think that that's probably yeah. the reason why they're getting so excited okay. is just because of the difficulties in terms of reaching audiences these yeah. days to make sure that it's, you know, they're, they're getting... They're spending the money in the exact right places to hit those people. So the context side of things is really yeah. important. Okay, fair enough. And obviously, if, if you read the trade press at the moment, there's a huge amount of uh, interest around identity and what that means for, for advertisers and publishers. In the desktop world, third-party cookies are going away. In mobile, device IDs are becoming harder to extract. But does that all mean more money into CTV? Hopefully it does, right? Because, just my, my guess, but quick show of hands. Do we think more money is going to come into CTV as a result of the identity crisis in desktop and mobile? Yes or no? I'm going to say yes. Yeah, I'm not sure whether it's a result of the identity crisis, but I feel like with CTV is growing regardless. Yeah. So I'm not sure where that budget's coming from, but there, there is a growth yeah. happening, and we okay. can see it you know, across all of our clients. So it's something that will be happening in the next, you know, what's happening now, but I'm not sure where it actually yeah. comes from. I mean, for us, we're just, we're just trying to tie all of our target capability up regardless of platform, yeah. Yeah. right? Whether it's, yeah. whether it's linear, whether it's VOD, whether it's streaming, whether it's you know, short form dig, whatever it might be, our job well, is to make things as easy as possible yeah. is for, for buying, right? You want one audience everywhere. Absolutely. And that's got to be a focus, right? Yeah. So cookies coming, cookies going, we'll just find another solution. And yeah. there are solutions out there. So something like, um, uh, Ninety percent of the campaigns that we sell through um, kind of ad smart Linz AI, we can replicate that targeting on all of our platforms. Yeah. Right. Regardless of it. So ultimately, an eyeball is an eyeball. We talked yeah. about earlier about impressions, but you and obviously things are priced differently. But you're you're trying to reach audiences, and ultimately you should be able to reach that audience regardless of how targeted is wherever they are. Yeah. And obviously you would then optimize that based on the outcomes that you want. Yeah. Whereas sometimes all the audience that you want. So sometimes short form might be better than VOD or linear might be better than short form. Okay. And that you should be optimizing that yeah. for the specifics of that that objective and that campaign. Yeah. That makes yeah. sense. Absolutely. And I think that now the programmatic and TV or broadcast space as it is are coming closer together from an agency um, yep. view. You know, we're I think I mentioned it before, we we're having to look at planning that holistically yeah. because Everyone, you know, the broadcasters are moving more into the programmatic and um, addressable side of things. You've got, you know, YouTube has now got, you know, CTV. So, you know, everyone's kind of moving in the right in the same direction. So, yeah. we need to make sure that we're planning it from a holistic view as well. Yeah, that, that, and, and that's a really interesting point, right? Around how the agencies are starting to 
invest more in programmatic intelligence when it comes to planning and buying TV campaigns. Mm -hmm. um, as younger audiences um, obviously lean into social platforms a lot more for their television content, many of them expect the same types of experiences that they've had in social environments on the biggest screen. Uh, what will that look like in several years' time? Will all CTV ads become shoppable to replicate the experience that younger audiences used to? Does all TV content have to become short form because that's what younger audiences expect? I mean, Annie, how, how, do, how do your advertisers think about those types of questions? I think shoppable is a really exciting space. Um, it's something that I think in the US has come along a lot more than in the UK. So I think, I think it was at Walmart that used... Um, that ran through Below Deck and Peacock. So they've kind of run shoppable ads through there and yep. Amazon trialled it with the NF, NFL, I think it yep. was. Um, so I think in the US, that side of things is moving quicker than in the UK. It's something exciting for us. I don't think it's necessarily going to happen in the next, say, three years, but I think that the outlook is that a lot of CTV ads will become shoppable at some point. But again, it's also down to the advertiser because you're not going to advertise a car is shoppable because yeah. no one's ever going to click through and buy a car through a CTV yeah. ad. So and you might be able to kind of book a test drive, but again, it's around the context of it and who's advertising where because you, you know, it's, some, it's just not appropriate for some advertisers. Yeah, no, that, that makes sense. And Jay, have, have you got any examples of kind of e-commerce convergence with television shoppable? Is so, that something that you think about from your side? Quite a lot. Um, <laughs> I know you yeah. referenced some of the stuff you've done with Boots and others. Yeah, so um, yeah, uh, so so the evolution of what we used to call full funnel, yeah, but now we're, we're increasingly calling commerce, yeah, um, is a massive focus for my team right now. Um, I'd say it's arguably our biggest single focus, um, and our matchmaker solution, which is basically our retail alliances, is just one part of that. Um, which is going to continue to grow. Yep. Um, and we've got, we, we've got people looking very specifically at other retailers that we might partner with. Mm -hmm. um, other things that we might do with Tesco and Boots as well. Um, so that, that, that's all going really, really well. Um, alongside that, the format and the advertising experience is really interesting to us. Yeah. So the 30-second spot, we've seen ways that um, we can augment that. Um, those of you as old as I am will remember Sky's red button interactivity. <laughs> You're not old. DALs, dynamic advertiser locations. <laughs> um, what, what, what it does show is that actually if we, if we do get the advertising experience right yep. and the viewer experience right around ads, um, people will interact, people will respond. And I think we, we a couple of years ago ran a sort of scrappy trial under Ad Labs. Um, making um, an ITV creative solution just, just, just to stick a QR yep. on your ad for free. Um, we, 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 ran, we ran that for about three months. About 50 advertisers took that up. Um, we saw some really interesting results. Yeah. So, Good so results? Com comparable with DRTV norms. Yeah, okay. Right, so uh, comparable in that, in that space. Um, but we all know that stick it, getting your phone out and yeah. doing that um, in front of your CTV remains a clunky experience. Yeah, yeah. So, so we are actively looking at mm. ways that we can build a much more seamless interactive experience. Yeah. Um, and and to, to your point about cars, yes, people aren't going to shop for cars, but equally people aren't going to shop for anything while yeah. they're watching TV, but people might inquire. No, of course. Mm. And people it, might convey interest, yeah. much like in the way you do in the social feed. Yeah. Yeah, you, you'd, very few people will buy anything off an ad mm. in Instagram, but a lot of people will share yeah. their data with an advertiser yeah. that, they, that they're interested and, in. And I guess as more TV ads become shoppable, that opens up a whole host of, you know, three or four years worth of panels around who owns TV attribution. <laughs> is it, is it, the, is it the, the streaming service? <laughs> is it the smart speaker? Is it the mobile? Is it the remote control? Is it the yeah. operator? So yeah. I know that's yeah. the direction of travel, yeah. but I do think there'll be a lot more investment in retail, shoppable, yeah. engaging yeah. formats to capture those younger audiences. Yeah. Um, talking about different types of... Go I, I don't think it's just younger audiences okay. as well. Yeah. So what we see... Um, we, we, we have a number of interactive transactional mm -hmm. aspects to our business um, and all audiences will interact yeah. um, with, with ITV when it comes to um, ITV Win, 
uh, buying merchandise. Yeah. It's, it's, it's an all audience opportunity. That's encouraging to hear. So yeah. that, and we, but, but that's not to say we aren't, we aren't seeing interaction amongst the young. Yeah. Yeah, on ITVX, we've seen game-changing growth. Mm-hmm amongst the young, but it is an all audience okay. opportunity. I do think we need to be alive though to, there are changing trends, right? You reference yeah. them around, you know, small screen versus big screen or whatever it might be. And and it used to be, um, sound like an old man now, right? <laughs> but it used to be kind of, as you got older, you kind of changed the way that you consumed media. And actually the, the research that we're seeing, and I'm sure it's out in the market, it's not just us seeing it, um, is that actually the, the trends are moving with people now. They're not yeah. just kind of, you know, so that this the the the, the clamour for short form content is not just going to be a sixteen twenty four thing. It will it will grow with the eighties. Yeah. But there's also other stuff that we've got to understand better and work out how to take advantage of. Right. Yeah. And I say take advantage, I mean provide those opportunities. There was a good there was a, 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 a another statistic that we saw, something like sixty percent of sixteen to twenty fours watch TV with the subtitles on and the sound off. Yep. And that's stuff that we're getting from Barb and from other mm-hmm. research, right? And you go, well, that's really interesting because what opportunities does that open up yeah. for effectiveness or messaging within, within content? Yeah. So we, we're all going to have to work out how to manage these shifting trends yep. and to, to, to make sure that we're able to provide solutions to appeal to all advertisers and deliver yeah. all the outcomes they want. Yeah, okay, that's, that's interesting to know. Yeah. And then, yeah. I guess lastly, from our side, we, we, we have to touch upon the rise of fast, and why is everybody so excited about fast <laughs> as, a, as, a, as a way to deliver TV content? Why, why are audiences leaning into it? Why are advertisers super excited by it? Maybe fr- from your side of the fence. I think it's, I mean, it's a cost yep. conscious decision in a way, isn't yeah. it, a lot of the time? So. Um, cost of living is increasing, yep. which means there's less disposable income. So a lot of families are having to, you know, decide what's, which subscription yeah. services they've signed up to. So that's kind of one point of it. And then the other side as well is that Fast really has some niche channels and targeting, sorry, yeah. niche channels and audiences yep. because of the channels that they've got. So looking at like Samsung, for example, I think they've got a, a channel dedicated specifically for bridezillas yep. and you know deal and no deal and things like that so i think that the content there is specifically very niche and they um it's it's almost tapping into that binge like binge kind of mentality as yep. well because if you're if you're looking to watch just deal or no deal you can go on there and you can watch a whole entire day of it so i think yeah. that it's yeah it's really appealing to a niche audience i know that that's a very strange no no it's true i watch hours of location on you the know yeah, yeah exactly you've got full channels which yep. are very niche and people are going on there and watching just that so from a like from a samsung point of view that's a very interesting way to kind of, kind of road to go down yeah okay fair enough um, and yeah. I know that there's obviously fast available now on ITVX right, as well as, a, as an alternative delivery mechanism. It's, it's a mode and mindset thing. TV, for as long as the age is, really, has been um, something you engage in to switch off. Yeah. Mm. Um, and fast delivers, delivers flawlessly in that space yeah. where you, 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 want, you want content that matches your mood. Yeah, of course. Yeah, so one of our biggest fast... Um, channel um, channels has been Christmas. Mm-hmm. People just want to watch Christmas themed stuff. Yeah, what, to all, get all, in the mood all year round, or just at Christmas? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's still on. Uh, but com- comedy, for example, um, and what we can't do is ignore that as an audience opportunity. Yeah, um, I think it's we have the content to package up. Yeah, in those spaces. Um, and it's 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 been a lovely addendum to yeah. our our growing ITVX content repertoire. No, I agree, and I think Annie, to your point around subscription yeah. fatigue, more and more audiences looking for free or low cost streaming. Jay, to your point, it yeah. kind of replicates what TV audiences have been used to for many years. Yeah. There's a in, okay, it's not the TV Times that you're reading anymore, but there's an EPG, an electronic programming guide. You can come home from work or college or school, there's a show, you can discover things organically. Yeah. And if you do just want to binge watch, you know, that opportunity is there to you as well. Okay, yeah. cool. So just as we close out, again, another question that we didn't rehearse or isn't scripted, but <laughs> I would love to know, just personally, not, not, not your corporate view, but what's your own personal interpretation of what TV content is in 2024? Jay, let's start from you. So if I said to you, you know, it was a dinner party, Jay, what's TV content? Full episodes. Okay. Um, high quality experiences. Mm-hmm. Uh, stuff that we'll actually talk about the fact we're watching. 
So I'm currently talking quite a lot about the fact I'm watching Griselda. Okay. I don't like it. It's a bit edgy <laughs> for me. I'm a bit old for it. Um, but um, I am talking about it, and there you go. Cool. Um, I've got three kids under 16. Um, <laughs> it's anything that engrosses you. Yep. Yeah. And, and, and grabs the attention, right? Uh, yeah. Or doesn't, and that's fine as well. Yeah. So I think it could be anything. I think, I think one of the things that we've lost in a, in a VOD space is the ability to talk about TV. Because yeah. you might be watching the same programme, but you're yeah, probably on a different episode. Yeah, of course. And, that, and I remember you know, starting work however many years ago. That's what you did when you came into the office. You talked about what yeah. you last night. Yeah. That's gone, which I think is really sad, but TV is anything that engrosses you. Okay, cool. And yeah. Annie, last thing? I mean, you know, it's nice to say those TV content to me is something that kind of spurs on those water cooler moments where you're sitting in the office and you're having a chat about, you know, specific shows that you watched last night, last week, whatever it is. Just like, um, yeah, I think, and as well, to me, it's almost something that you watch on a screen in your own time that you're enjoying, yeah. you know, in, in your downtime, basically, yeah. because it's a, a lot of the time now, I think everyone's busy and it's difficult to kind of find that time to yourself. So to me, like TV content is kind of when you're sitting down watching it on your own. And yeah. yeah. Okay, fair enough. So in theory, it's anything that uh, an audience uh, decides to engage yeah. with on the big screen yeah, in the exactly. household. Yeah. Um, some, some, some agencies and brands may say that has to be professionally produced. Others may yeah. say that it's kind of, it can be uh, influencer created. It's kind yeah. of a little bit ambiguous, See, right? I don't think it needs to be professionally created these days. I think user-generated content can be strong, depending on what it is. Obviously, like, clients are very conscious about um, making sure the content they appear against is you know, fit for purpose. But yeah. at the same time, you can get correct user-generated content that's great to appear against. Absolutely. Cool. Well, thank you very much. And uh, sorry we started a little bit late and there's a few uh, haphazard moments on stage, <laughs> but hopefully you're okay. And uh, thanks for joining us, everyone.